everyone. This is Wes Henson, pastor of the Ridge Church. And the Ridge Church campus is located at 7350 Old Highway 13 in Carbondale, Illinois. And this is a five-minute summary from session four of the seventh session series, Essentials of Christianity. We began with uh, our study talking about the nature of God, and we focused on the Trinity. God has revealed himself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then in our second session, we looked at the purpose of humanity from Genesis chapter 1. God created us to serve and to honor him. And last week, we looked at the nature of sin. Our text was Isaiah 59, verses 1 through 13. And the point was that we are sinners, and on our own, we can do nothing about it. And that was the bad news, and that sets up our Bible study for this week, the week of March the 28th, 2021, titled The Death of Jesus. And our text is John chapter 19. If you click below, you'll find a two-page outline and a study guide of this lesson. And then I invite you to join me Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. on Facebook or our website as we study these passages in detail. The point of our study today is forgiveness is possible because Jesus died for our sins. Okay, let's begin. For many, we live in a time of do-it-yourself, right? Rather than calling a repair person, we attempt to fix whatever's wrong by ourselves. And if we don't know how, well, we'll just Google it. And it may take a whole lot more time than any professional, but at least we can say, I did it myself. Well, we can't fix everything. Sometimes we have to call the plumber, the train mechanic, and, and, and nobody would recommend that you perform your own heart surgery, I don't think. And a broken relationship with God is something else that we can't fix on our own. Only one person can fix our sin problem, and that is Jesus. Our study is in John chapter 19, and the focus of John's gospel was quite simple. John wanted to convince people that Jesus was the Messiah, the Savior of the world. So let's take a look. Uh, we're looking at John chapter 19, and verses 8 through 11 is our first stop on our study today. I want to read verses 10 and 11, though. So Pilate said to Jesus, Do you refuse to speak to me? Don't you know that I have the authority to release you and the authority to crucify you? You, should, you would have no authority over me at all, Jesus answered him, if it hadn't been given to you from above. That is why the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. So the truth here, and truth number one, is that Jesus' arrest and con con uh, crucifixion was under God's control. Jesus understood that even though things seemed to be spiraling into chaos, everything was actually functioning per perfectly within the Father's plan. God is a perfect and just God, and the work for salvation was perfectly complete when Jesus died. Even when the circumstances seemed out of control, Jesus was able to complete his task, knowing full well that he was held perfectly in the center of God's will. Okay, our second stop is down uh, to verses 16 through 18. Verse 16 says, Then they took Jesus away. Carrying the cross by himself, he went out to Golgotha. Verse 18, There they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Truth number two is that Jesus suffered the cruel punishment of crucifixion for us. For Jesus, the cross wasn't a tool of death, but it was a doorway to life and eternal glory. As Jesus' trials concluded, he was led away for execution. John doesn't go into graphic details of how extreme and horrific the crucifixion was. The first readers of this account would have understood since it was a common form of execution. But as Jesus carried the cross by himself, he was walking a path that was reserved for us. As he was nailed in place, his hands and feet were nailed when it should have been our hands and our feet. And when he died, he died a death that we deserved to pay a price that we could never afford. Okay, let's make our third stop down in verses 28 through 30. And I want to read to you uh, verse 30. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. Then bowing his head, he gave up the spirit. Truth number three is that Jesus' death completed the work necessary for our salvation. Jesus remained in control of his life and his death until the very end. John wasn't just recounting the Savior's death. He was emphasizing that everything happened exactly according to God's timing and plan. So here's the application of our study. Jesus' death was the final sacrifice that covered the sins of the world. And in light of this, consider the following actions. Action number one, lay down the burden. 
Uh, sin is an exhausting burden to bear, but because of Jesus' sacrifice, we don't have to carry it. So let's spend time in prayer thanking God for forgiving our sins. Application number two, offer forgiveness. Since we have been forgiven by the blood of Christ, ask God if there are those whom we need to forgive. And then application number three, share the message. The forgiveness and, and salvation that Jesus provided through his death is available to everyone. Share this truth this week with someone. All right, let's wrap this up. Despite the fact that humanity rebelled against God, God still loves us. He loves us so much that he did what he could never do, what we could never do for ourselves. God sent his son to bear the punishment that we justly deserve for our sins. Okay, remember, click below for a two-page outline and a study guide, and then join me Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. on Facebook and our website as we study this passage in detail. Bye now.